Good afternoon and welcome to ZTN News Blitz. Let's take a look at our top stories. Corruption investigators swoop on schools. Traditional leaders flex muscles. Zuma's arms deal trial postponed. And in sport, Williams Irvin on recovery path. The Zimbabwe Anti-Corruption Commission, ZAC, says it has visited six schools in Harare and reached out to four more virtually as it moves to act on schools that are illegally charging students tuition for extra lessons. ZAC spokesperson Commissioner John Makaure told that told ZTN that the commission has also reached out to 8,657 learners in the campaign. Commissioner Makamure added that the anti-corruption body is actively investigating several malpractices, which include the illegal sale of uniforms and schools. Is campaigning against paid extra lessons, but we are also addressing issues of illegal imaging of uh, school accounts, uh, rampant disregarding of tender procedures in procurement of goods and services, illegally selling of uh, school uniforms in schools in which most uh, heads and SDC members are conflicted and collusion, a payment of bribes to enroll learners and several other offenses. And having seen the roads, uh, we have live investigations uh, going on in a number of schools. While one school is under compliance and systems audit, exact we are still to complete investigations so we can speak of arrests as of now. Teachers need to be advised that uh, extorting money through extra lessons is a criminal offense and therefore all those caught on the wrong side of the law uh, will be arrested and brought before the courts of law. The majority of SDC members and parents should stop being conduits for corruption between uh, the teachers and parents and guardians. Still with the courts, the Mashonaland Central Chief's Council is not happy with the manner in which criminal cases are being handled. The province's chairperson of the Chief's Council, Chief Nambira, says in Mount Darwin District, serious cases such as rape keep being referred to Bindura, which disadvantages victims as they may not have the resources to travel. As a result, some people travel travel hundreds of kilometers for a regional magistrate to preside over the cases. The regional court here is too severe in terms of criminality. It's a lot of people who are a junior and very junior magistrate. And it's a lot of senior who are a senior. Yet, the province is a you go up to 300 kilometers to do the Nobata with the Dura. In response, Chief Magistrate Munamatom Tevedzi told ZTN National and Central correspondent Fungai Lupande that the country has more high court judges than regional magistrates. The number of regional magistrates was set at 25 in this country. There was no rational uh, logic behind it. There was no scientific approach to why that number remained at 25. So we've been lobbying and complaining about the, 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 the inadequate number of regional magistrates in the country and complained that uh, even uh, judges of the High Court were more than the number of regional magistrates in the country. Zimbabwean-born Kate Nicole is set to be the next Lord Mayor of Belfast. Nicole, who is councillor for the Alliance Party in Northern Ireland, is the first African to hold the position. The 33-year-old grew up in Marondera, about 72 kilometres east of Harare, before her family moved to Belfast at the turn of the millennium. Nicole will assume office at the start of June, succeeding the dupes Frank Macobri in the top position. At Belfast City Council, she is one of the representatives for the Balmoral area in the south of the city. Our correspondent Christine Maseko caught up with Nicole, who spoke about about her recent election. I'm incredibly proud, <laughs> very proud to be the first African-born mayor of Belfast. And I've been told that there was only one other mayor uh, who was born outside the UK and Ireland. And I think that was in 1896. So very proud. Really hope that um, newcomers to the city, other uh, Africans, People who have come and made Belfast their home see this as a really positive message that if you embrace the city, uh, if you get involved, then you can really do anything you set your mind to. So very proud and uh, hope I inspire other Africans, um, especially to, to get involved in politics um, in our city. 
She also spoke about some of her fond memories of growing up in Zimbabwe. I left Zimbabwe 20 years ago when I was 12 years old. Um, but I have so many, so many wonderful memories of my childhood there and the people, my friends, um, my school. I went to Dickelfall Primary School in Marindera and I learned all the values that are so important to me today, you know, to, to get involved, to work hard, to be honest. Um, I remember so many things. I remember <clears throat> the warmth, <laughs> it's very cold in Northern Ireland. <clears throat> I remember I remember going to the Zambezi and uh, staying in minor pools. I remember knickknacks and cream soda <laughs> and jelly tarts, <laughs> Simba crisps. Um, but mostly I just remember that it's my home, you know, that's where I was born and where I grew up and I'm so proud of that. Moving on to agribusiness, the volume of rejected tobacco bales during the 2021 marketing season has increased by 30.2% compared to the previous season. In 2020, a total of 27,801 bales had been rejected by day 25, but this year, 36,207 bales have been rejected to date. So, what is causing this high rate of rejection? Tobacco Industry and Marketing Board spokesperson Kelisani Moyo explains why and what course of action farmers can take. This season, the country received above normal rainfall and because of that, the quality of tobacco for this season has a lot of moisture content. Now when it comes to the pack packaging of tobacco for the market, farmers are over conditioning their tobacco. And now when their bells are opened at the floors, they are then rejected because of moisture content. The presence of moisture also exposes the tobacco. So all these bells which are rejected for either one or more of the reasons highlighted are then rehandled. At some floors, they are rehanglers who assist with handling of the issues raised on the rejected bells. But at some floors, the farmers are allowed to collect their bells and sort them out themselves for later resale. To date, total tobacco sales exceed 85.5 million kilograms, which have seen the gold leaf earning the country over 221.75 million United States dollars. Still with business, 10 Zimbabwean companies are showcasing their products in Dubai at the Zim Trade organized Outward Seller Mission. Our market analyst Kudzanai Sharara is in Dubai and speaks to Mosi Oatunya CEO Shepard Mafundikwa. Good afternoon, Kudzi. Several Zimbabwean companies are currently here in Dubai where they are showcasing uh, their products uh, at the Outward Seller Mission that has been organized by Zimbabwe's uh, Trade uh, Trade Development and Promotion Body, that's, uh, that's ZimTrade. And at least uh, 10 companies are here. Uh, we've got some of them is uh, Moswatunya that, that is into uh, cigar manufacturing. We also have uh, Interfresh, which is also showcasing their products here. And, uh, and uh, according to Interfresh CEO, uh, Zimbabwean companies have to be honest and trustworthy if they are to be successful uh, here in Dubai. And we are here today uh, participating in this uh, exhibition, export exhibition in Dubai. And uh, the whole idea behind our visit is to introduce our product to this market. And we are looking forward to meeting with buyers who um, may be interested in our product. So we've got um, you know, different types of cigars that we are manufacturing in uh, Zimbabwe. And um, we can go through. Uh, we've got um, our Habanus wrapper, which is uh, Habanus flavor. And we do have um, Sumatra wrappers as well. 95% of our tobacco is Earlier, Kudz and I attended a conference where Interfresh Executive Chairman Jasad Mohammed outlined the importance of timing in the export business. Um, in the past, there was there was a big demand for lemons. You would get twenty-two dollars a carton for lemons, so everybody starts planting lemons. Everybody, and then the price of lemons crash. So it's important to also understand what you need to grow, and. 
Timing is everything. So in Zimbabwe, for example, our citrus, our lemons come out earlier than South Africa. So that's important. We need to capitalize on that market. So understand what you need to grow, understand where the windows are, and then you can compete with everybody else. Because if you start to sell lemons, when South Africans sell uh, le lemons, you will not compete. On to regional and international news, former South African President Jacob Zuma's long-awaited arms deal trial has been postponed to the 26th of May. The former president will have, then have the opportunity to enter his formal plea. Zuma and his co-accused French arms company Thales are facing charges in connection with South Africa's multi-billion rand arms deal of the 1990s. On to Mozambique. Mozambique has launched an application in South Africa's Johannesburg High Court for an order compelling the country to extradite its former finance minister Manuel Chang without further delay. Maputo claims that South Africa have violated Chang's right to justice by holding him in prison for nearly 29 months, awaiting extradition either back to Mozambique or to the U.S. to face corruption and fraud charges arising from a two billion U.S. dollar loan scam in Mozambique. Chang was arrested at the Oaratambo International Airport on the 29th of December 2018 while traveling from Maputo to Dubai for a holiday. Palestinian officials in Gaza say Sunday was the deadliest day since the current fighting with Israel began. More than 40 people were killed in Israeli airstrikes on the territory yesterday. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres has warned that further fighting could plunge the region into an uncontrollable crisis. Up next is sports news. Don't go away. In partnership with Wanamari and Billions Business Magazine introduces the International Entrepreneurs Conference on the 21st of May 2021. From 4 p.m. to 9 p.m., Rainbow Towers Hotel, Harare, Zimbabwe. With the highly esteemed captains of industry, the business mogul, Dr. Chamuchiwanza. A global leader, Ms. Esther Benjamin. The mental health guru, Dr. Deborah Machando. The investment guru, Mr. Akim Bourne. The phenomenal leader, Mrs. Rose Musarurwa Charewa. The marketing guru, Mr. George the Billionaire Munengwa. And a special one-on-one -on -one interview with a renowned successful Zimbabwean entrepreneur. Free exhibition space plus a two-course meal dinner for on-site participants. $50 for on-site participants and $10 for virtual participants. All proceeds will go towards the Masaido Scholarship Program. For registration and more info, kindly visit www.masaidoli.org. Registration opens on Friday the 7th of May and closes on Thursday, 20th of May, 2021. Come learn and dine with the elite. Masaido Lead, leading entrepreneurs for African development. Sports news on a Monday. We start with cricket. Zimbabwe Test captain Sean Williams and batsman Craig Irvin are expected to start light training this week as they both recover from injury. Williams is recovering from a finger injury while Irvin had a calf strain. The two close friends missed the Pakistan Test series, which Zimbabwe lost by an innings in both matches. Their recovery is a boost for the Chevrons, who are set to host Bangladesh for a full series next month. In NBA action, LeBron James has touted Steph Curry as the NBA MVP for this season. James said this as his Los Angeles Lakers are preparing to take on Curry's Golden State Warriors in a play-in tournament this week. The winner of this matchup will progress to the main playoffs, meaning Lakers have a longer route in their NBA title defense. Meanwhile, Curry joined Michael Jordan as the only other NBA player to win a scoring title after turning 33. Curry finished the regular season with a scoring average of 32. That story on NBA does it for News Plus this afternoon. Uh, we're back again tomorrow, same time. Do make a date with us. Do remember to connect with us on our social media platforms on Twitter at ZTN News, Facebook at Zim Papers TV Network, Instagram at ZTN. And remember to like and subscribe our YouTube channel at ZTN. And you can also visit our website, ztn.co.zw. Thanks for watching. Good afternoon.